So um, we have just finished doing our UV unwrap for this character here. And off camera, I did a little bit of rearranging of the map itself. I didn't move any seams or anything like that. So these islands are all exactly the same. I've just rearranged them in this zero to one space. There's nothing special, no special technique for how to do this. All I did uh, was select everything and I made sure that the pivot point on the UV editing side was set to individual origins. I then scaled all of these up ever so slightly because I thought that I could get a little bit better resolution um, than I had just using the automatic packing. So all I did was hit S and scale them up like about that much, honestly, from where they were. And um, then I just rearranged them so that they were all on this zero to one UV checker with no overlap. Again, there's no special technique for how to do that, but my general methodology is to take these smaller islands, such as these hands here, I move them off to the side, like over here, and um, I arrange the larger islands then without having to worry about these little ones, sort of in an optimal configuration so that they fit nicely together. And then I take these smaller ones and I just put them in the gaps. Um, so the other thing I want to make a note of here is that the eyes and the rest of the body do share a UV space here. So when doing the eyes, um, you just you want to select both objects in your outliner and tab into edit mode and that will give you access to both of these objects here. Now the eyes are still utilizing a mirror modifier. Um, right here. So basically what this means is that um, unless I applied these and unwrapped them separately, they're always going to uh, be textured exactly the same. So as you can see, they're sharing the same green cross on them right now. And if I, in fact, if I were to come into the uh, UV editing mode here and um, move them around, you would see that both eyes would move. So in this case, this is what I want. I want both of the eyes to be exactly the same when I texture them. And since they are going to look exactly the same in texture, there's no reason that they can't share the same texture space. Just note that anything that is overlapping or sharing texture space in your UV map will have to have the same texture applied to it. That is just the way it works. So with that being said, um, we are ready to move on to baking. Now I did run into a couple of issues baking normal maps for this when I was testing it out. So um, there's a little bit of a difference in how we are going to do this compared to how we did it last time with the props. So when we um, baked the normal map for our prop, we used the multi res modifier and we used the uh, bake from multi-res option here. Um, I ran into some issues doing that, so we are going to not do it in that way. So um, the first thing that I want to do to prep for this is we need to use the selected, um, selected to active for our bake, so we need to duplicate this mesh out first and foremost. So I'm just going to select the character body mesh here and I'm just going to hit shift D and duplicate it, and then I'm gonna right click to drop it right in exactly the same space it was. So um, I'm gonna rename these now. We're gonna have one to represent our low poly and one to represent our high poly version. Okay, so this one is our low poly. So I'm just gonna hide the high for a minute here. Um, I also found that when I was doing test bakes for this character, I ran into some issues because this character is actually quite low res uh, for a character model. Now I'm used to working with environment models principally, so I'm used to a much lower polygon budget, uh, meaning how many polys it takes to make up this, this character here. Uh, but in general for characters, uh, you, you can and should use a little bit higher of a budget to get better results. Uh, one, because characters tend to be more of a focal point than environment pieces, so players will spend more time looking at them. And two, because they need to be animated and uh, animation works better um, up to a point if you have a little bit denser of a mesh. So I actually want to put my low poly version up to my viewport level of one for my multi-res modifier here. 
and this is actually going to be our base mesh for this piece. So um, I have a little bit of pinching going on with the ear. I'm just going to fix that in sculpt mode with the smooth. So it looks like I neglected to um, make sure that there were no sort of artifacts when I did my retopology here. Um, so a quick, quick diversion there. All I did was come in with the smooth brush and smooth it out. Um, so um, we're going to set our multi-resolution modifier to one on our low poly version, and we're going to apply it at a level of one. So whatever you have your multi-res modifier set to here, when if you go to apply it, that it will use that as the basis for its application. So this is my first level of subdivision here. And now you can see that this is all baked into our mesh. And this is probably a more appropriate density for a character, especially a playable character that we are going to be spending a lot of time looking at. Okay, so um, we are ready and prepped with our low poly character here. It maintained all of its UV maps. Everything is still looking good. So I'm gonna hide it in the viewport just temporarily. And I want to look at the high poly character right now. Um, so for the high poly character, I don't need this material on it at all. So I'm just going to delete it from the materials tab. You just want to hit this delete key. So this is our high poly. Um, what we can do is we can apply this as well from the multi res. Just make sure that your uh, viewport levels are set all the way up to the highest level of subdivision, which in my case is three. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this right now. And if I were to tab to come in edit mode, you can see that this mesh is much denser than my low poly. Okay, so um, now that we have all that taken care of, we can get into our actual baking of our character. So I'm going to switch to the low poly version right here by selecting it in the outliner. And we can come into the shader editor here to get all our material information up in one place. So um, I don't need this UV grid anymore, but I can reuse this material that I've already made. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect this here. And I'm going to use this same texture slot to bake my normal map into. So I'm going to get rid of the UV grid that is currently in this texture slot by hitting this X button right here. And now this will give me an option to create a new image, which we're going to. Let's call it normal. I'm going to bake at a 4K texture size. Uh, we do not need an alpha channel. And press OK. So here we have our normals right here. Uh, currently just a blank black image. I'm going to change the color space to non-color. And um, I think we are ready to bake now. So let's come into our uh, render properties here. If you are still in EV, make sure you change it to cycles. Otherwise, you will not have this menu option here for baking. Of course, we want to change our device to GPU. And um, now down in the bake settings here, we're going to change it from combined to normal. We're going to make sure that we have selected to active checked here. Uh, I want to set my margin size to something closer to 8. Uh, 16 is quite a large margin size. And just as a reminder, if you don't recall, the margin size refers to this space right here and how much we should extend any information we're baking outside of our UV island space in order to avoid seams uh, being present on our model. So. If that number is too high, it will bleed over into the next island and cause errors there. But if it is too low, we will be able to see our seams. So um, I think for a 4K texture and the amount of space I have between these islands, I think eight is probably pretty good. Okay, so um, this is set to eight. Um, the next thing we need to do is set our extrusion and our max ray distance values. Um, so this will require a little bit of trial and error, but um, let's set our extrusion to 0.1 and our max ray distance to 0.2 just as a starting point. I also want to make sure that you change your um, max samples for your render settings to 1 uh, just for your test render. It's just going to speed up your render time a little bit. 
Once we have all our settings the way we want them, we can up res this and do a final bake. So um, let's go ahead and do our bake. Um, we are not going to bake any normal information for the eyes here because the eyes are just plain spheres. So um, they don't need any normal map. There is no high poly sculpted version of our eyes. So we're just going to uh, disable them for the time being. So um, to disable them from baking, make sure you hit this camera icon as well. Okay, so we have our low poly and our high poly visible. Our low has our material with our normal map texture slot in it. Our high poly has no material. So I'm going to um, select the high poly first, then control and select the low poly to get the proper order, uh, the proper selection order. Of course, again, that is really important when baking in Blender. Uh, it's selected to active, so take information from this and bake it to this. So um, let's just hit bake and see what our results are like with these settings and we may need to tweak them. If you wanted to speed up your um, bake times even faster, if you're not sure about your settings, you can bake to a 2K texture, which would be a 2048 by 2048 pixels. When you make this normals here, you can make a smaller version and bake it out and it will render even faster. Okay, so our results are right here. Um, they're looking okay that we have a few errors, especially when it comes to being around areas where there are like tight corners. So let me, let me apply this normal map to our model so we can see what these types of errors look like on a model. So we need to shift a vector normal map, connect color to color and normal to normal. I'm going to hide the high poly and come into layout to get a better view here. And if you're having trouble seeing sort of the details on your normal map, I recommend um, reducing the value of your base color. By default, it's a 0.8 white. You can set it something to darker like 0.5 or even 0.4. Um, I just find it makes it a little bit easier to see. So we have some issues right here in the nostril area. This looks like it's maybe being caused by our max ray distance not being quite long enough. And we have some issues in the leg here. Now this is a problem because in this area our max ray distance is probably too long. And um, basically what's happening is it's sampling from the other leg here and it's kind of getting confused. So let's tweak our settings a little bit to see if we can help fix this. but. I'm also going to show you how to touch up normal maps in Photoshop uh, if we need to do that. Okay, so let's change our max ray distance. Let's try to put it up and see if this makes it better or worse. So I'm going to change, I'm going to leave my extrusion at 0.1 and I'm going to change my max ray to 0.3. And, um, the other thing you want to do before you hit bake again is just disconnect this map. Otherwise, you'll get an error down here and um, it'll it'll complain at you. Okay. So let's select the high control, select the low and hit bake one more time. OK, so it didn't get rid of these things completely. Um, not that I really thought it would, but um, let's reconnect our normal map to make sure we visualize it. So we're still having an issue in the legs here. We're still having a little bit of an issue in the nose, but it's actually kind of fixed it. So um, you can spend a lot of time trying to tweak your normal maps, but with really complex shapes like this, where you have areas that are very far apart and then areas of like tiny crevices, like in the interior of the hands, we're having the same issue here where it's sampling the fingers that are too close to it. Um, so, I mean, we could try one more bake to do that, but sometimes it's just faster to fix these issues manually in Photoshop. So I want to show you how to do that. So um, let's, we need to save this image out in order to edit it externally. So let's come to image, save as, and you can see I have my test render right there. Um, we're, I'm just going to save over it. And um, we need to open this in either Photoshop or whatever image editing software you use. So let's open this new one here. 
Okay, so this is our the current state of our normal map here. Um, and we just want to come in and fix some of these errors that would otherwise take too long to tweak our uh, our bake settings to. So the way that I would go about doing this is I would use the uh, spot healing brush right here. Um, this one is really useful for doing things like this where you need to just basically paint out errors. Um, so what I would do is I'd come in and add a new layer, make sure sample all layers is on for this and make sure it's sent to uh, content aware. And all you have to do is come over this and start to paint this out. Now for these larger areas, you may need to use the clone stamp tool. Um, again, make sure it's set to current and below. Um, otherwise it will be sampling basically nothing. But uh, with the clone stamp tool for these larger areas, I can come in and uh, press alt to get my uh, target selection here. I'm just gonna select an area close by to it maybe a little bit farther out. And I'm just gonna start clicking to stamp out these errors. And same thing on the other side. So this is the uh, interior of the legs, I believe that I'm fixing right now. So um, once you have these stamped out, you can visualize this. If you come in and uh, save your new edited image over the existing one, then you can come into Blender here and just come into image and hit reload. And you can see that those errors are now gone because it's loaded the updated image here. And in fact, from here, this looks pretty good. Now we still have this error here, which is caused by um, an area of a different UV island. So we need to go around basically and uh, fix all these UV islands here. I know this seems sort of tedious and I mean, maybe it is, but trust me, it's less tedious than uh, trying to get your bake settings perfect because sometimes your shapes are just too complex. If you do this all on a single layer, you won't have to go through this tedious saving process every time. It'll just save over your PNG, but I personally like to do it in a layer until I know that it's going to work. So let's reload it. Those little blips are gone and they are in fact gone from our model. So um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of time and fix these areas in between the fingers as well and in the nose and um, hopefully the end result will be a workable UV map. Um, we're getting some errors here. These are the ears, the exterior of the ears, I believe as well. Um, so same thing, we can just kind of you try the spot healing brush to blend out some of these harsher lines here. We'll get you a, a little bit better of a result. I like to periodically check my progress in this before I do too much work. Um, I just like to know if there's any issues while I'm doing it. So 
every once in a while I'll come in and I'll save it out and I'll reload it and I'll check the areas uh, that I was working on. So this area is fixed, it looks like. Uh, this one still needs a little bit more work. These ones still need more work. So I just come in and basically do that for all the areas. Um, again, I know this may seem like a little bit hacky, but I promise this is uh, faster than trying to get your bake settings perfect. And when you're working in a production environment, it's all about how to get the, the best results in the quickest amount of time. And trust me, I've seen professional 3D artists do this when they just are getting frustrated with bake settings. Um, especially in Blender, um, as great as Blender is as sort of an all-purpose tool, because it's not specialized into any particular area of 3D, some, sometimes some of its functionality is a little bit more rudimentary, uh, such as its baking functionality. There are programs that are more dedicated to this part of the process, such as Marmoset and, um, and Substance, um, that tend to give you a little bit better results or are at least a little bit more user-friendly to use and set up. Um, but Blender, because it's sort of a generalist, some of the baking functionalities are a little bit rudimentary. The reason I'm not showing baking in any of these other programs is that they are all proprietary and cost money to get a license to. So um, Blender is the free alternative, of course, and in at least the case of the baking um, and some of the sculpting, it is a little bit of a case of you get what you pay for. So sometimes you need a little bit more uh, elbow grease in order to get these things to work, whereas some of the uh, paid packages and programs for things like this, uh, they do work a little bit better out of the box. But, um, you know, it is, it is never bad to know how to do things like this, because if you get too dependent on these, on these programs and maybe you're working for a studio and, and they don't want to pay for those programs, um, knowing how to do this sort of manually can be really invaluable, especially if you're working on an indie or title or like a smaller team. They're really going to like it if you, you know how to save them a little bit of money by not having to use these really expensive programs. Let's check our progress. I think I've mostly been working on the hands. Maybe a little bit in the feet. Okay. Um, if you're ever not sure what part of the mesh you're working on, you can always grab it in the UV editing side and enable this UV sync selection. So now if I were to grab this island, um, I could, it would tell me that I've been working on this island. So everything down here should be fixed on this end of the hand. Um, I believe this edge is over here. So yeah, I haven't gotten to this upper region yet. So when I come into my material preview, you can still see there are some lines here because I haven't gotten to that island yet, but everything on the palm of the hand looks fixed. Okay, so basically all I'm gonna do is use a combination of the clone stamp tool and the spot healing brush. I'm gonna go in and fix all of these errors off camera and I'll show you the results when we come back. And when we come back, we're also gonna bake our ambient occlusion maps.
Okay, so um, I have just finished going in and cleaning up my normal map in Photoshop, and this is my result. You can see I've just moved out those areas that were erroring out and causing some really harsh transitions. Um, so I just gave everything that was really harsh a little bit of a uh, softer transition into the flat normal color, which is what is in these in-between spaces here. And this is my normal map applied to my model. So as you can see, if I zoom in like in between the fingers is all a smooth transition here and uh, the legs here as well. And I think the nostrils were an area of issue and you can see that they have just all been smoothed out a little bit. And I achieved that simply by going in with the clone tool on my normal map. So um, with that in mind, let's go ahead and move forward and bake our ambient occlusion map. So I'm gonna come into the shading tab here. And um, here where I have changed my value from 0.4, I'm gonna change it back to one because we want the base for our ambient occlusion to be a pure white. So let's come into our bake tab here. Um, again, we can have our test render here is going to be at one for speed purposes, but especially for the ambient inclusion map, we will need to up res that before we get our final result. So let's change our bake type to ambient inclusion. We're going to keep all this the same. And we need, of course, a texture to bake it into. So let's shift an A and add an image texture. Let's create a new texture slot. Uh, we don't need an alpha, so there we go. Um, let's preview this over here. And let's make sure we have our selection order correct here. We want first high, then low. Select our texture and let's hit bake and see our initial results. Okay, so um, these are our AO bake results. Obviously, it's very noisy because our samples were very low, but overall, um, it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of an issue here um, and a little bit in the nostril, but not too bad. Again, that can all be fixed in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and up res this and bake again. Okay, so here is the result of our bake. Again, we have a small issue right here and I think a small issue right here. These things can all be fixed in Photoshop, uh, which I will go ahead and do using the exact same methodology. And um, when we come back, uh, we will look at how this AO map looks on our character model. Okay, I just wanted to jump back in really quickly and talked about and talk about how I uh, baked the ambient inclusion for the eyes. So we weren't worried about the eyes at all when it came to normal maps, but for the ambient inclusion bake, I did not include these character eyes in my initial bake. So um, I realized that I, I needed ambient inclusion for them. So I went in and added them in later and to do that, all I really had to do was um, re-enable the eyes for the uh, render image, which is this icon right here. And um, I came into my bake settings and I disabled selected to active. And most importantly, I disabled this clear image one. So this clear image setting uh, tells Blender to overwrite uh, this image with whatever information that you put in if you hit bake again. But if you disable it, when you hit bake again, if I only have the eye selected, basically it'll just overlay the second bake information over the top of this one. And since I only had my eyes selected, it just added in this little patch right here, which is the visible portion of my eye. So that is how you uh, add on to your bake, so to speak. So now if I come in and I, uh, save this image out again. Well, what's really nice is I would have been working in Photoshop to correct some of the errors I had. And here is my old bake. But since I was working with layers, uh, what I can do now is just uh, drag in that new bake as a new layer here. 
And as long as it's placed uh, underneath this layer that I was working over my my cloning and my spot healing tools, um, I didn't really lose any of that work that I did uh, fixing up some of the errors I had. So um, I just wanted to pop in really quick and talk about how to add in this ambient occlusion for the eye. Um, I'm gonna pause the recording again to finish up uh, cloning out the errors here. And uh, when we come back, we will look at this on our model. Okay, so I have finished using my Photoshop tools to sort of fade out some of the issues with the bake. So um, let's look at this ambient inclusion map on our model. And to do that, we're just gonna connect it to base color here. And right away, you can see some of these areas of shadow that have been just a little bit enhanced. So looking at between the fingers, it's, it's pretty good. Um, it is at least good enough for our purposes. So that is gonna be it on ambient inclusion baking for our character. I know this was a briefer video than most, but at this point we have baked ambient inclusion and normal maps a couple times for a few different types of assets. So you should be somewhat familiar with the process. And if you're not, just go ahead and go back and watch those videos from the previous sections. So um, that is going to conclude this section for the map baking portion. And when we come back, we are going to be texture painting this guy.